This is from the October 2001 Christian Science Sentinel, written by Susanna Penn, who at the time was a freelance writer uh, of a nonprofit organization in New York City. The title of the article is Dealing with the Moment, the scene from a Manhattan office window. Before going to the office, I waffled a few minutes between preparing for a meeting and doing my normal Bible study. I opted for the Bible as the best preparation for the day. So I left my apartment feeling a clear sense of inseparability from God, a strengthened awareness that my relation to him had prepared me for the meeting or anything else that would happen that day. I live on Fifth Avenue, just a block from the office. It's a short walk, but full of the flavor of New York's busy determination as people rush to work. The hint of fall is in the air, and the clear blue sky added to my inspired awareness of being close to God. I was looking forward to a day with a wide horizon. Out of the elevator about 8.45 a.m., I dropped my things in my office and went to the conference room for the meeting. I immediately noticed out the window that one of the towers at the World Trade Center was on fire. As others arrived and saw the black smoke and heard the rage of sirens from the street below, it was apparent the situation was serious. Back in my department, my staff gathered to listen to the radio and TV. One coworker and I agreed we needed to turn away from the horror. We went to a small office and after a few minutes of silence, began to share prayerful ideas as we thought of them. We declared that no individual could ever be separated from God and their true spiritual being as his beloved child. We continue to insist on God's presence and power, no matter what we might see happening. Deadly sins of terrorism could not overtake and destroy anyone. The idea of one family came to us, that the one holy family is Father, Mother God, and his, her, perfect child, we were able to go back and be a calm presence for our staff. Still, each of us was silently praying. I was called to my boss's office for a crisis management briefing. By the time I reached that floor, the second plane had hit the other World Trade Center tower, and many employees had gathered to look out the windows. As the first building collapsed, Many employees were crying and fearful. The calm ones put their arm around those who were overwhelmed, holding them up. I held myself up mentally with prayer. In my boss's office, even as we focused on crisis planning, we could see the cloud of smoke from the collapsed tower grow. I participated in the planning, but my thought was also focused on the true and only possible outlook for every child of God, a clear and cloudless horizon of good. I thought the bigger the lie about man that anyone could cause this catastrophe and put others in such peril, the sharper and more piercing the truth that dispels the lie had to be. Although I can't say that fear never crept into my thought and my voice, for the most part, my thought was turned away from the images outside. But if I was to be of any use, I had to be oriented toward God's unbounded horizon of good and away from this mesmeric trance of doom. I went back to the spiritual study that launched my day. I particularly like this reference from Mary Baker Eddy's book, Science and Health, with key to the scripture, 
which I use in my Bible study. Matter, sin, and mortality lose all supposed consciousness or claim to life or existence as mortals lay off a false sense of life, substance, and intelligence. But the spiritual, eternal man is not touched by these phases of mortality. Page 311. By mid-morning, most of our 500 employees were all called to meet just as the second building collapsed. The meeting began with quiet, then silent prayer. By then, caring provisions had been set up. A chapel on the 10th floor, counselors on the 12th floor, a communication center on the 17th floor, and we all had each other. Back at my computer, I typed more prayers. I wrote, we have many employees whose loved ones worked in the World Trade Center, family and friends. We are helping them. We are all very quiet now. We all have God here and now. Throughout the day, as colleagues passed in the hallways, I met I, but few words were spoken, only knowing and silent caring. By the end of the day, most of our employees had heard from their loved ones who worked in the now collapsed buildings. Gratitude was tempered by hope and prayer that others might also be safe. From my apartment on the 27th floor, looking north, although the sky was clear and bright, the city seemed paralyzed under a sober pallor. That was a hard moment. From the roof looking south, I could see huge dark clouds hovering over the site where the World Trade Center had stood just that morning. Once again, the Bible study regained my attention as it had all day. The truth inseparably from God and his children kept me going.